was kind of hoping last week no one would say that we'd be talking about fasting this week. I thought it might put a few people off from coming to church, but apparently that, that didn't happen and word got out that we were talking about fasting. So well done for showing up, even if you knew what the topic was for this morning. But as we start out, let's just, let's just talk a little bit around what fasting is. And there's a whole lot of different definitions. I'm going to share a couple with you because I found them quite helpful. So like a secular dictionary definition of fasting was just abstaining from all or from some kinds of food and drink. And even there it said, especially as a religious observance. So that was the kind of dictionary definition. I think in, from a biblical point of view, the, the fasting focuses a lot on abstaining from food. If you just look at a normal Bible dictionary, that's where it would come from. But then we want to broaden that definition a little bit because we want to speak not just about food and drink but about things beyond that that we could also abstain from and we, we'll get into that a little bit uh, in, in a moment. So this might be something that we'd consider fasting is abstaining from something like food, drink or entertainment for a period of time to create some type of benefit in body, mind and spirit. That was another definition I came across. And then maybe a more church one, withdrawal from earthly appetites in an intentional and concentrated effort to access the things of God and God himself, creating space for the satisfaction of the soul and supernatural breakthrough. I think that's getting a little closer to what's in our hearts for, for the week ahead. But it's really a, a natural discipline with supernatural results. And that's what we really trusting God to do amongst us. So I don't know what comes to mind for you when you think of fasting. Maybe food is really the main focus, and you can pop up number four for us there, Deshalen. So maybe you recognize yourself in one of those photos. Um, <laughs> the, the cake and the sugar. Maybe the guy looking into the fridge and hoping there's going to be something really good there. Uh, but we want to, fasting is just saying no to those appetites. Next one is drink, and maybe uh, you recognize yourself there. Uh, not just alcohol, but maybe coffee is your big thing, or Coca-Cola, who knows? Um, and maybe entertainment and media is really one of our big, big current challenges. So maybe you're saying, hey, that's me, I'm on my phone 24-7, um, not always fruitful time. Maybe TV and sport is your obsession. Um, yeah, where the season never ends, there's always something happening and something to, to track. So we're just saying fasting just, just is dealing with, with those attractions and distractions and saying we're going to just take a break from all of that and invest that time in the presence of the Lord. Some of you know that I quite enjoy motorsport and the last two weeks has been the Dakar rally and when I looked at, the, when I looked at our schedule for the you know, for this time, I was quite glad that the, the Dakar rally finished on Friday and now fasting starts next week. Um, that, that, that worked pretty well for me. I love tracking our involvement. There's so much good stuff from a South African perspective there. Uh, but I'm really glad I didn't have to sacrifice that in the week that lies ahead. So I'm not sure what your thing is. It's the Australian Open. Tough on you. I give it a miss. Um, yeah. But we want to put those, those so it's pleasures and, and distractions and even interests that we want to just put on hold and just say, let's, let's just devote ourselves, let's give our time, let's give our energy and our attention to the things of God in the week that lies ahead. So, so how do we fast? I think the, the basics are fairly straightforward. We're going to decide on a time frame and then decide what to fast. So these are some of the traditional sort of options. An absolute fast would be no food, no water. And there are some examples in Scripture of that. A standard fast would just be water only, no food and water. Partial fast, which I imagine is something that many of us might attempt for the week, is to, 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 to be selective and to say, okay, I'm, I'm only going to eat this this week, or I'm only going to drink that, or I'm, I'm going to leave a whole lot of things out of, my, out of my week that I normally enjoy. So that would be a partial fast. And then intermittent would be just basing it more on, on time frames and saying there's just a window that I'm going to eat and then a, hopefully a small window and then a, a bigger window when I'm not going to, 
to eat. So you might feel you need to be sustained or whatever your, your activities and commitments are, but you can still participate in, in, in an, by doing an intermittent fast, by setting certain time frames. And those, as, as we do that and as, we, as our body talks to us, I think it's always just a reminder of prayer and the presence of God. Whenever we feel our tummy rumbling or a, a reminder of food or a desire awakens or we see something, it's just a reminder. Let's just go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to prayer. Let's go back to the presence of God. But what's the big deal? I mean, we can say, okay, we're going we're gonna to stop eating. Um, or, or lay aside certain things, but, but there's a whole lot more that we're pursuing than that. I know some of you have done like 21-day Daniel fast. We used to do that quite often in the church in Pretoria uh, at the beginning of the year. And I remember oftentimes we would, we would come together in the morning. We had quite a big staff team, and we'd gather in the morning. And the topic of conversation would be, what did you have for supper the night before? You know, how was the soya patty, you know? <laughs> And, and, and um, you know, what new recipe did you come up with? And, and then sometimes I'd sit in my office and I'd feel like, I can smell slop chips, you know, and it's a nice smell. And we had a Mandesach cafe was just around the corner. And the guys were like, let's try and find loopholes for this Daniel fast. You know, what can we get away with? And sometimes they'd inadvertently forget to tell the guys, you know, don't put the sauce on the chips because that was really nice as well. Um, and he's saying, it's... You know, you, you think back to those times, you think, that's not the focus. What, what we actually want is to get together and say, hey, guys, what did, what did God say to you last night? How was your time with God this morning? And not get so fixated on food during the fast, because it really can happen. And we say, we don't, we don't want that. We don't want the focus on food. We don't want the focus on trying to find loopholes for whatever commitments we've made and whatever our structure is. But, but there's so much more to fasting than that. So we could fast food, we could fast drink, we could fast activities and interest, but, but what's the point? Why do we want to bother doing that? And let, let's have a look at some biblical examples of fasting. And I think this, this just helps us to realize the Bible is full of examples and many, many different examples. So we can jump to slide number nine there, Deshaila. I'm just going to take you through this briefly, but there's, there's a one-day fast, Sunrise to sunset, this was in Judges 20, the armies of Israel set the day aside to seek direction from the Lord, and God gave them wisdom in the middle of battle. Uh, there's a three-day fast, that's what Esther called for. She said, without food, without drink, she asked all the Jews to fast with her. She needed wisdom, she needed discernment, she needed protection. It was a three-day fast. In Acts 9, you remember when Saul was converted and then he went blind? And, and he was blind for three days. It says that he didn't eat or drink for those three days. And then Barnabas came to him and God touched him and, and restored his sight. There's a seven-day fast mentioned in 1 Samuel when the Israelites were mourning the loss of Saul. And it, it was a part of that fast was for comfort. It was a fast related to grief and loss. They were fasting for comfort, but also for, for wisdom and for guidance. We're familiar with Daniel, and in the beginning of Daniel, he does this 10-day fast of just vegetables and water only. It was kind of like a health test, and, and to say, we, we don't want the, 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 the king's food. We'll just do vegetables and water and, and check us out after 10 days. Uh, in Acts 27, there's a 14-day fast, and this was, it's not clear whether it was voluntary or enforced, but, but it's Paul and the men in, on the ship. And it says that they didn't eat for 14 days. They were in a time of deep distress. So they, they didn't eat for that 14 days. But it was also a time where they were trusting God for protection and wisdom in the midst of a, of a very uncertain situation. Back in Daniel, we have the 21-day fast, where Daniel was in, in three weeks of mourning. And he was perturbed by a vision that he'd seen. And he wanted insight. And he was praying and seeking God during that time. It just says that there was no, no meat, no wine, no rich or pleasant food, no oils. He just ate fruit and vegetables and nuts and drank water instead of wine. And that's become quite a, quite a popular model. But, but Daniel had set his heart to, to seek God and to understand the vision. I'm aware of three 40-day fasts in Scripture, Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. 
And I think just to say, when looking at, at, at those three fasts, sometimes if you ask people about biblical fasts, those three come to mind quite quickly because they're very prominent people. I would venture to say that's not a biblical norm. I think those three fasts were both exceptional. And there's, there's indications that, that those three men experienced supernatural divine sustenance during those 40 days. So it's not just like, hey, yeah, I think 40 days is good. Let me do 40 days. I, I think that those were very unique 40-day fasts and really supernatural sustenance from God. And I know many people would say, I've, I've never fasted for 40 days. But um, I think that those who have would also testify of some supernatural assistance and help through that time. But, but I think let's not just say 40 days is a normal biblical fast. I think 40 days is an exceptional fast that's mentioned in Scripture. But I think we're getting the, the picture that there's a lot of other fasting that happened uh, biblically. There are also quite a couple of fasts mentioned. This is slide number 10, where, where we're not actually told much about the fast. So it's also fasting is mentioned in these incidents, but we don't actually know how long they fasted in, in some of the cases, and we don't actually know what they fasted in some other cases. In 1 Samuel, the people were feeling abandoned by God, and this was due to their own actions, not because God had withdrawn, but God told the people, God gave this message to Samuel and said, tell the people to repent, and their response was a time of fasting. God answered them, their prayers. He gave them great victory over their enemies, but it, we don't know exactly how they fasted or for how long they fasted. In Nehemiah 1, it just says that Nehemiah prayed and fasted for many days and nights. But he was seeking God for wisdom and understanding and favor. Again, we don't know exactly how long that lasted and exactly what he fasted. In the book of Jonah, God had sent Jonah to tell the people of Nineveh to repent. And, and the king responds to that message and he calls a fast for the city. And it was like no eating, no drinking. We, we're seeking God and we're repenting as a city. Uh, but we don't know how, how long they fasted. We do know for sure, though, that the city was saved. Uh, so, always good news. Joel 2, God calls his people to come to him with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Again, it's just a call from God. It's not specified as to exactly what they should do, and, and, and any details are, are, are not specified. But there is that beautiful scripture in Joel 2, verse 13, where it says, Rend your heart and not your garments. And I think we want to just press in there a little bit this morning as well, just saying that there's some, some real heart that needs to be out. This, this fasting is not just an outward observance. So when we look at all of these examples in Scripture, for me it speaks about great variety in fasting. It speaks about not a fixed recipe for a fast. We just see it was a response to God, but there's not a, there's not a one way to do it. There's not a, it has to be so long, it has to be these items. There's, there's great variety in Scripture. The thing that, that is obvious is there's a, there's a turning away from some stuff that's a key part of fasting. So there's that sacrificial element of saying, we're not going to do certain things. And then there's a turning towards God that's part of every effective and successful fast. So there's that movement of saying, I'm moving away from certain things and I'm pressing in to certain things. What, what caught my attention as I was preparing this week was God's response to fasting. It's beautiful. You, you read every single one of those passages, God did something. Every fast had an outcome. I mean, you might have picked that up already just in the, I mean, I've run through a lot of examples really, really quickly. But every fast had an outcome. Every fast had a response from God. I think that is incredible. And, and super, super encouraging for us as we go into this week to say, okay, if I'm fasting from Monday to Friday this week, laying aside certain things, putting some time aside for God, pressing into some, certain, you know, in, into some things, what can my expectation be? I'm saying, you can expect a response from God. You really can. There's only one thing that, that hinders that response. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. So what do we do during this time of, of fasting? What do, you, what, do you, what do you do? We're saying, okay, we're we, we, we laying aside 
certain desires, certain food, certain drinks, and we're saying we, we want to give our time to God. Well, I think some of it is, is really straightforward stuff where we're saying, okay, we want to use that time differently. So prayer is obviously a fantastic partner to fasting. Uh, and, and for myself, I would say that, that for sure the, the fasts that I've benefited from the most in my life is when I've had ample time available to combine the fasting with prayer. And, but it's also not an excuse. I can't say, okay, I still have to be at work this week and I have to do all of these things. So I'm not going to fast because I don't have extensive hours to plow into prayer. Fast anyway and do as much prayer as you can. But, but prayer is a fantastic partner to fasting. So we're saying, yeah, we, we want to do that. Those two things we understand, that, that really goes together. So pressing in prayer, spend time in God's presence, spend time in prayer. You can spend time in the Word. You can say, okay, that, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping that meal. I'm going to take that 15 minutes and I'm going to spend time in the Word. I'm going to get into the Word. I'm going to, I'm going to have something that, that I'm pressing into in the Word. Use that time differently as time in the Word. I think that, that's really, really valuable. There might be other literature that you want to read. You say, okay, I'm going to spend time in prayer. I'm going to spend time in the Word. But there might be something else that God gives you that you say, hey, I just want to read that into a specific topic or an area that I'm pressing into. I think that's also time well spent. About a year ago, I had a, a couple of days when I was able just to, to give extensive time. And, and one, of the, one of the books that I read during those couple of days was a book by Dudley Daniel just around the, the church. And as part of my time of prayer and fasting, that book of Dudley Daniels just, just so ignited a fresh passion in my heart for the body of Christ, for the church and God's call over the church and the potential of the church. It was very much part of that the time of, of prayer and fasting as well. So those are some of the things that we can, we can build into the week and do alongside the fasting. It, it, it's not just let's not eat or let's not spend time on social media. L let's use that time differently. I think this, this, this little quotation will, is, is helpful. I think it sums up some of what I've been saying. Don't focus on what you are doing without. Focus on what you are doing. Don't focus on what you are doing without. Focus on what you are doing. So this week, this is my time. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm pressing in. My focus is going to be the purpose of the week, what I'm doing. I'm not going to be worrying about the TV program I'm missing, the food I'm missing, the social media updates I might that can pass me by. Um, all right, so let's have a look at, at why do we fast. This is slide 11. Why do we fast? And we're just going to take a quick reality check because it can be for a lot of not so great reasons. And unfortunately, this is true, but also Scripture speaks to it. So it could be for peer pressure, it could be for weight loss, it could be for pride, it could be to try and manipulate God, it could be to, see, to try and be seen by people. And the Bible speaks to this. this. This outward show, Matthew 6, speaks very directly to that. And Matthew 6 speaks to an outward show in, in three different areas. He, Jesus starts out and he speaks about an outward show to do with good works, good deeds. He speaks about an outward show in terms of prayer. And then he speaks about an outward show in terms of fasting. And it's very clear that, that those things are, are, are you know, not pleasing to God at all. This is Matthew 6, verse 16. He says, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, Anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father. And then he adds this beautiful, you know, the finish to the sentence. He says, you, you are going to fast to your Father. And he says, your Father is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Isn't that a beautiful promise for us for the week to say, you know, we're going to press in. We're going to spend time in the secret place, and we're going to fast unto God. And God who sees what we're doing in secret is going to reward us openly. And again, it's just the promise of reward, response from God, which is great. Isaiah 58, such a famous passage on, on fasting, and it's a similar, uh, the, 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 the 
point of Isaiah 58 is very similar to Matthew 6. So the people accuse God. They say, God, we're fasting. We, you know, we, we're seeking your face. We're doing all this fasting. And there's like, you're not responding. And, and, then, and then God comes back to them and he says, well, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You're just doing your own thing. He said, you exploit your laborers. You fast for strife, for debate. You strike with the fist of wickedness. He says, you're not going to fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. He said, you want to fast like that? He said, you're not going to get a response from God. He said, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. He says, is this a fast I've chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head like a bulrush, to spread out sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes? He said, would you call that a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? He's just saying, it's just a big show, just a big outward show. He said, that's not acceptable to the Lord. You're going to get no response from God. But then he goes on in Isaiah 58, in such a beautiful passage. He says, isn't this more what I'm looking for? Isn't this more the fast that I've chosen? It's what God wants. It's taking care of others. He says, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. He's saying, this is the stuff that excites me. This is not to share your bread with the hungry, that you bring to your house the poor who cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him, and you don't hide yourself from your own flesh. He says, that's the stuff that pleases me. But then he gives us in, the, in the, these last couple of verses in Isaiah 58, also just such beautiful promises related to all of this. He says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. He says, and then the, the verse nine I love as well. He says, then you'll call and the Lord will answer. You'll cry out and he'll say, here I am. <laughs> Can you imagine in this week when you're calling on the Lord and fasting and spending time in his presence and, and God's kind of at the door saying, hey, here I am, here I am, here I am. I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here. I'm hearing. I'm responding. And so we can fast for a lot of not so great reasons, but we can fast for a lot of really great reasons as well. So let's jump into those. That's slide number 12. Um, Fasting expresses our desire for intimacy and connection. And I think that's the, that's the bottom line of what we're doing this week. We just say we want intimacy, we want connection, we want to be r- really deeply connected to our Father. And fasting is just an expression of that desire to say, Father, I'm willing to put aside all other distractions. I want you more than anything else. So fasting really helps us get rid of distractions, and in many ways it causes us to confront distractions. So I don't know what those distractions look like in your world, but we're saying we want to want to get rid of those distractions, and it's a really good part of the week. Um, I know the children are, are with us this morning as well. Maybe parents, you can just invite your children in to what you're doing this week. They might not be on the same page as you in terms of prayer and fasting, and but but for our young ones also to lay aside certain things that would be attractive to them or distractions in their lives would also be be good. So whether that's a favorite TV program or some kind of a favorite snack or something, just draw them in, let them experience something of what you're pressing into as well. Fasting is a discipline. Fasting is a discipline, but but discipline is a key to success in every sphere of life. And it's the same for us spiritually. Sometimes discipline, spiritual disciplines produce fruit in our lives in an amazing way. So fasting is a discipline, but but that helps us to be successful, even in spiritual matters. And we believe the reward spills over to every sphere of our lives. Fasting helps us to use our time differently. And I trust you'll really experience that this week. If you think about even just a, just a meal, how much time it takes to, to think about food and what you're going to eat and food preparation and time eating, saying we can just use our time differently. Some of you would know how much time you watch TV, how much time you use on social media, how much time you spend tracking the news and and global reports and saying, I can use my time differently. So fasting helps us to use our time differently. Fasting sharpens our focus when we seek God's guidance and direction. And I think for many of us in this week, you you might say, you know, I'm praying and I'm fasting, but I actually have a question. I actually have something that I... I would really like to to hear from God. I'd actually like a a response from God. Well, this is a great week to bring that question before the Lord and saying, Lord, I'm I'm sharpening my focus. I'm sharpening my ear. I'm 
I'm listening more carefully, more intentionally than in a, in a normal week. And in that fasting time, in, in that sensitivity that's heightened towards spiritual things, I can expect to hear God's voice and have his clarity and his guidance in a special way. Fasting leads to spiritual growth and, and breakthrough, and we really want to experience that, uh, and I believe that we, we do. I, I can't think of ever having a conversation with a believer that's fasted with a with the right heart. I think you understand what I'm saying. The, the, there's the, the outward show, and sometimes those, if you ever get caught up in that kind of fasting, it can produce nothing. But when you've, when you've fasted unto your father, and you've spent that time with him, I can't remember ever having a conversation with a believer that said nothing came from that fast. There's always been some kind of growth, some kind of breakthrough, some kind of spiritual shift that happened. And I think we, we're very grateful for that. We, we heard an interesting testimony in my daughter's church in Australia when we were there a couple of weeks ago. A lady stood up and shared her testimony and said she was actively pursuing Buddhism. And she was doing all the Buddhist disciplines and meditations and fasting and, and getting frustrated that she wasn't getting anything out of it. And a friend of hers had spoken to her about Jesus. So she just decided, well, in her, in her Buddhist discipline, Instead of trying to focus on the things that, that they'd been instructing her in, she would just just try f- focusing on Jesus and see what happens. So, so that's what she did. In her Buddhist discipline, she just took Jesus as the subject matter. And he showed up. And he revealed himself to her in a remarkable way, completely turned her life around. She got thoroughly saved, encountered Jesus, and is Flat out for God. So, you know, never know what, what kind of, uh, yeah, where, where people are at. But, but God is willing to reveal himself to us. And, and so we're expecting spiritual growth. We're expecting breakthrough as we give ourselves to him. Remember, our, our deepest need is union with God. It's, it's the goal of our existence. Our faith and our fasting should lead us to to intimacy with God, and even beyond that, to, to union with God. We want to be connected to the life source, Jesus. And that's what we want to do this week. It's just that I, I want to enhance my connection with Jesus. I want to be deeply connected and, and have his life manifesting through me in a way, in, in a new way, in, 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 a, in a deeper way. So let's, let's conclude and wrap up and just say, okay, so how, what's, what's our approach for the week? What's the challenge for us as people sitting here this morning? And, and, and what's, how can we do this practically? Let's, let's activate something and, and, and let's talk about our, our week. So the first thing that, that we would want to do is just set a time frame. And, and we're saying as, as a church, Monday to Friday, that's great. If you can participate with us Monday to Friday, That'll be really, really awesome. So we, we are kind of putting a time frame out there and saying, if you can do that, great. If you can't do that and you're just going to say, I'm doing one day or choosing two or three days this week, that's great. But our, our corporate time frame is Monday to Friday. And you've heard from Marius as well. We go into a different kind of a weekend next weekend with all the HMI churches gathering and just it'll also just flow nicely into that. But Monday to Friday is the time frame. Then you need to decide on what are you fasting. And it'll be really great if you decide on that while you're in church this morning (laughs) and just say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do this week. This is what I'm going to fast. So you might say, what what am I going to leave out? What am I going to leave out in terms of food, drink, media, entertainment, time? And what am I going to to do? What what, what am I going to do? Am I going to just do water? Am I going to add one or two things to that? What what is that going to look like for you? for the week. So decide on, on what you're doing. Um, we have a prayer guideline out for, for which we did for Monday to Friday this previous week, Monday to Friday for the week ahead. Um, that's gone out on our, on our WhatsApp, on the, the Christian Center WhatsApp group this week as well. So you've got it there. If you need a hard copy, pick that up. But it'll also just help you to say, okay, Monday to Friday, here's five prayer themes. Here's some scripture. Here's some prayer guidelines for each of the days. So please use that. Use it with freedom. Use it with flexibility. But that could be a helpful tool for the week as well. Then I really want to encourage you to reinvest your time and maybe add to it. Just like I've got 
time that I've normally spent in other activities, I can reinvest that time this week and maybe just add something to that. So you might say, well, 15 minutes is supper, but I'm going to add 15. I'm going to spend half an hour with the Lord uh, in the evenings. Whatever that looks like for you, but reinvest your time and add to it. This could be your best week ever. <laughs> uh, I think a week of prayer and fasting doesn't have to be like, oh my goodness, this is a tough week. Could be your best week ever. You could have connection with God, fellowship with God. You could hear from God in ways that you haven't ever before. And we just want to keep the focus on connection. That's really what we're chasing. That's what we want to do this week is deeply connect with God. Remember what we said earlier? Don't focus on what you're doing without Focus on what you're doing, and you're going to be in for a really, really great week. I want to pray for us this morning and just pray for, for God's enabling, for His direction, for His answers, for His response as we spend these days in, in, in prayer and fasting. I'll maybe pray as well just for the Lord to show you what to fast. If you haven't got that clarity, then let's just ask Him to, to show you that as well. But we want to see God. We want to hear God. And we have this beautiful opportunity enhanced by fasting for the week that lies ahead.